A shy little Oklahoma girl to a world-class performer. Joining us today is Alicia Clifton, a two-time Guinness World Record holder in dance, second runner-up to Miss America, and now an accomplished choreographer and Thunder Girl. I'm your host, Julianne Thomason, and welcome to Studio 22. Hello and welcome to Studio 22. I'm your host, Julianne Thomason, and we have a very special guest today. Um, Alicia Clifton, thank you so much for being here and joining us today. Yeah, thanks um, for having me. Yeah, so you have two Guinness World Records, right? I do, yes. Okay, so um, how old were you when you decided to go for these world records? Well, my first one, I was about 14 years old, and it was really the most random coincidence that it happened someone had just mentioned to me you know you turn a lot you should get a world record and we kind of went hmm is that actually a thing and so we looked it up and no one had set one before so we decided to go ahead and do it okay so you didn't even have anything to beat right, right. Mm -hmm. so you just completely well, started for my first record was, for your first mm -hmm. record my and second one there was a previous record. okay and what mm -hmm. was your first record my first record was for the most consecutive pirouettes and tap shoes so those spins that you see all dancers doing uh, yes and then the second one was for the most alice cones in 30 seconds so the turns where your legs are out um, that one had a previous record that was set by a man okay which one was harder to achieve Mm. I think the first one was a little bit more difficult, the pirouettes, um, just because I had to keep my momentum going. But the second one, I think, was a little bit more painful because you have your centrifugal force that's going and it's pulling your arms all the way out and it's pulling your toes. So you feel like you have no feeling in your Oh hands. my gosh. <laughs> wow. Okay. So what was that process like? I have never gone for a world record, so I have <laughs> no unearthly idea. Um, do they come? Is there actually someone from the Guinness World Record? Do they film you? Who's there? Who's watching? watching well, to first um, get started, and if you want decide you do want to set a record, you have to actually contact Guinness and get permission. And so after you send in all your paperwork and after they grant you permission, then you have to have several witnesses, a person who's a profession and uh, who's professional in that field. Mm -hmm. um, you have to have someone you don't know, and you also have to have a government person there. Oh um, wow! Okay. And then you have to set up cameras in multiple different angles to ensure that you're not cheating. Um, and that's how we did the first one. And the second one, they actually flew me um, out to Italy and to China eventually. Um, and they had all of that set up there. So okay. I just had to show up. Wow. So can you tell us a little bit about that Italy experience and kind of traveling the world to try and beat those world records? Mm -hmm. It was actually very exciting. I had never been to Italy before or China. So both of those experiences were really cool. Um, when I first went to Italy, it was actually pretty interesting because they weren't going to let me accomplish um, the goal at first because I was a female. And the turn is technically in Europe a male turn and so um, after lots of discussions and lots of meetings they finally l eventually let me do it and so I ended up doing 48 Alice Cones my first time so it just shows a girl can do anything a guy can do mm -hmm. and, right. <laughs> and then um, when I went to China it was so so wonderful um, I actually ended up beating my own record and instead of doing 48 I did 50 in 30 seconds so wow. it was a really cool congratulations Thank what you. a neat opportunity to have <laughs> your name in the world record not once but twice that's pretty incredible I think you're gonna have to help me come up with my world Anytime. record I'm jealous Anytime. I want one <laughs> if you too I should get maybe one we can try for it you'll have to help me out so um, you got to travel the world a little bit to do mm -hmm. some world records and try to beat those appearances. Were you ever, um, did you ever have the opportunity to perform on a TV show or um, any other appearances like that? I did. I actually had the very unique opportunity to be on the Regis and Kelly show. And then I also had the opportunity to go on the Ellen DeGeneres show. So both of those were pretty cool, very nerve wracking being on live television, um, trying to accomplish a record. Um, unfortunately, on both of those appearances, I was not 
able to beat my record for the pirouettes, but um, I still got to meet Ellen. I got to meet Usher and Wilmer Valderrama, so <laughs> it was a pretty good day in my book. The perfect life. <laughs> yes. Wow, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. So, um, were you ever to kind of practice on these world records? Did you go to the studio? Did you have to practice? Um, or kind of what was that preparation like? Well, that's the big thing about it all is that you have to work towards it. You have to prepare for it because um, you have a set day and, you know, you only get so many opportunities to do it. I can't be there for six hours trying to break a record. And so I would practice in uh, my house. We have a little dance room at my house. It's a small room, but um, it works. And I would practice for hours each day because it's, some, it's a goal I had set for myself and I really, really wanted to achieve it. So it was up to myself. It wasn't up to my parents. It was up to me to go out there and do it every day and make sure that, you know, I was improving or I would at least be close to, to be able to accomplish this goal. Yeah, absolutely. So do you have any more uh, world records in your future that... <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I don't think there are any time soon. Um, I'm a little old now, so maybe I'll just help other people <laughs> oh, yeah. get their goals or something. <laughs> I don't believe that for a second. We'll, we'll work on mine, then we'll figure yeah, out... Yeah, we'll figure out your record next. So um, I believe, did you help some other people achieve a world record at one point? I did. <laughs> I did. Um, whenever I was competing for the title of Miss Oklahoma's Outstanding Teen, um, I was able... I was volunteering at the OU Medical Center. And so what we ended up doing is they heard that I had a Guinness Book of World Records. So they wanted their own. So what we did, <laughs> oh, right, who doesn't want one? Um, so we ended up uh, getting these pipe cleaners and we made them into hearts. And we wanted to create the world's longest chain of hearts. And we ended up, we worked on it for months and months and months and months. And when we finally finished, it was able to wrap around the building twice. So, I mean, it, it just shows that with, you know, hard work and de determination, you know, you can really achieve whatever. And when you get a big group of people who are there supporting you and uh, working on it, um, you know, you can achieve anything. So mm -hmm. they all got their own Guinness Book of World Records of Absolutely. the longest chain of hearts made out of pipe cleaners. Yeah. Well, it takes a team. That's so neat it that does. you were not only able to um, get two Guinness World Records yourself, but help others achieve their goals as well. Yeah. So um, on that note, we're going to go ahead and take a break, and we'll see you next time um, in a little bit to talk about your um, crowning as Miss Oklahoma. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll be right back. in retreat. The shot goes up. Devasone comes out of nowhere and another block for OCU. This guy's on fire. This kid owns OCU's record in blocks not only on the court but off the court as well. Earlier today he was busy crashing the boards. Just a rebounding machine. Even cleaning up the glass. Giving a whole new meaning to garbage time. Devasone MVP on the court and keeping Oklahoma beautiful off the court. Hey, Oklahoma, do your part and help. Keep Oklahoma beautiful. This is our land. This is our pride. Our roadways that we travel, our lakes and parks that we love, our businesses that we build, our communities that we create. And that's why littering is not okay. This is Oklahoma, our land, our pride, and we must take care of it. So do your part and help. Keep Oklahoma beautiful.
back. Uh, thanks to, for joining us again on Studio 22. Um, we have our very special guest, mm -hmm. Alicia Clifton, who is um, here with us today. Mm -hmm. So, Alicia, you were Miss Oklahoma I 2012. Yes. Um, what a cool title um, to represent the state of Oklahoma, and what an honor to have. Um, what was that crowning moment like? I don't know if there's any way to describe that crowning moment. I mean, so many emotions go through you. You're so excited. You can't believe it's actually happening. You want someone to pinch you. Um, it was so, so wonderful because it was a culmination of so much hard work and so much um, dedication that I had put in for so many years, and it had finally come into fruition, and I got to be Miss Oklahoma, so it was pretty exciting. Yeah. So right after you were crowned, I'm sure you remember that night very vaguely. Yes. But you got crowned <laughs> Miss Oklahoma, and they took you to a press conference. How were you able to kind of recollect um, your thoughts and kind of pull yourself together to be able to automatically take on that role and to start kind of your reign as Miss Oklahoma? Well, I think that comes all with the preparation. Um, when you're training to become Miss Oklahoma, you recognize that you're going to have to wear many hats. You know, you're going to have to put on the hat of, you know, going into schools and sitting down and speaking with kids, and then you have to, you know, change hats and then go into a business meeting yeah. and talk to people. Mm. Um, so it's just about knowing what your role is at that moment, and as soon as you're crowned, you know that that is now your responsibility. And even though you're so excited, and which of course you should be, um, you just have to walk into that room professional and being Miss Oklahoma and being able to ask all these questions. And then you get to celebrate afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, after the press conference, did you go back to your house? Or did you move into an apartment, mm -hmm. the Miss Oklahoma apartment? Um, how quickly did that kind of unfold? It's immediate. As soon as, as you said, you know, we you get crowned and then you go into a press conference mm -hmm. and then you go into the Miss Oklahoma breakfast where everybody gets to celebrate yeah. and you just get to ha see your family a little bit. Um, and then that night you're taking in, to your hotel room with your traveling companion and then um, your parents are moving you out of the dorms and then the next morning you have your contract signing and then you move straight into the Miss Oklahoma apartment and wow. so I'm from the Moore area um, okay. and so I've lived in Moore and I went to school at OU so I was in Norman um, but I immediately was moved into Tulsa and so um, my parents had to bring all my stuff <laughs> up and which was a cool move it was really cool to be able to live and be on my own for a year and assume the room the role of Miss Oklahoma. Yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. absolutely. So after Miss Oklahoma and mm -hmm. kind of that night and moving in, when did you start preparing for Miss America? I think we started pretty quickly. Now when I was Miss Oklahoma, uh, Miss America was still in January. Um, now it's in September, uh, but it was pretty immediate. We started looking at gowns. We started working on my talent some more. Um, we started working at interview because you just never know what they're going to ask you in interview. Um, but also I started going into schools immediately, and I think that's oh, okay. a big part of mm -hmm. your preparation is being able to go into schools, talk with kids, and just being able to handle any situation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So after all that preparation, you went to Miss America. I did. You finished second runner-up. <laughs> what an accomplishment well, and what an you. honor. Um, tell us a little bit about your Miss America experience and kind of behind the scenes, what was it like to wear the sash of Oklahoma and mm -hmm. be in a room with girls from every different state in the whole entire country? It was so exciting. I mean, it was everything that I had ever hoped it would be. Um, we were very fortunate, and our group of girls was very close. And so we even still have a, a group me text, and we still talk to each other constantly. Um, so being able to be surrounded with so many women who not only are you know, wonderful competitors, but they're great people. Mm -hmm. um, makes that experience so much more enriching. Um, I just remember being exhausted a lot because yes. you <laughs> get up super early for rehearsals and you get back super late. Um, but it was just so, so much fun. So many wonderful experiences there um, and get, got to meet so many great people. Um, and I wouldn't tra trade any of it for the world. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a blast. Um, my family and I, as yes. you know, got to come <laughs> watch you and support you at Miss mm -hmm. America, being your team. And <laughs> I was in the audience cheering so loud, and I remember um, cheering you on for all the prelims, which you won a I talent did. preliminary award at Miss America for your talent, mm -hmm. uh, which you will be performing for us I in will. a little bit. Kinda so dust it off. Um, we have a very <laughs> exciting treat ahead. Um, but what was kind of some um, opportunities that you got to go travel and do prior to those preliminary competitions? Well, so we were in Las Vegas, which was mm -hmm. a lot of fun. Um, and we were really sequestered a lot um, because it's about security and we want to make sure that we're all being safe and we don't have any crazy people coming up. Um, but we got to go see a couple different shows. Um, we got to film some things at the Bellagio. Um, 
Oh man, I can't even remember all the things. There was just uh, we got to film a couple of music videos in different malls. And we got to run, walk a runway in a mall. There were so many different events that we got to do. But again, it was all about you know the people that you're around and the experience that you're getting to have. And then you know, truly, in my opinion, the most special moments were like moments where I got to come back to visitation and like see you know people like you that I know <laughs> and people that are hometown feels. I got to see my parents. Those are the moments that I really treasure more than anything mm -hmm. else. Yeah, so you got to finish your reign as Miss Oklahoma Thank and come you. back home to us. Yeah. Um, and were the rest of that kind of duration or reign, was that speaking at schools? Or can you tell us a mm -hmm. little bit about that? So as soon as you're done with Miss America, you go back to assuming the role of Miss Oklahoma, mm -hmm. which is the best job in the world. Um, I got to go to so many schools. I got to travel all over the state of Oklahoma. Um, and I just got to be a people person. I got to yeah. meet people, I got to talk with people, I got to you know, give speeches, I got to dance a lot. Um, I got to work a lot with my platform for volunteering. Um, got a lot of kids involved with that and you know, finding ways that they can volunteer. Um, so it was a really, really great experience. I mean, I loved being at Miss America, I loved it and I loved the experience, but I loved being Miss Oklahoma a hundred times more. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for your year of service, of and thank course, you for thank being you. one of my biggest role models <laughs> as your teen, and I kind of got to follow you around and uh, watch your amazing year. Um, so stay tuned for us as Alicia um, is getting ready to perform her dance that she mm -hmm. um, won a preliminary talent at Miss America. You don't want to miss it. Some people don't think it's easy to be green. Audrey does it every day. Turn off appliances when they're not being used. Shut off the lights when you leave a room. Always recycle paper. Recycle plastic, too. Today, Audrey did her part in helping OCU conserve. It's that easy. Have you done the same? Visit okcu.edu slash bluegoesgreen for more information. OCU is that open shot to a winning goal. Countless rehearsals for one flawless routine. Learning to serve before trying to lead. Learning a language everyone can understand. OCU is me. 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 I'm OCU.
perform the tap dance that captured her the Miss America Talent Preliminary Award. And the role of second runner-up to Miss America is Alicia Clifton performing Money Can't Buy Me Love. to give if you say you would love me too I may not have a lot to give but what I got I'll give to you I don't care too much for money cause money can't buy me love can't buy me love no 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 say you don't need no diamond ring and I'll be satisfied you want the kind of things that money it just can't buy. I don't care too much for money, cause money can't buy me love. Oklahoma isn't your room. So don't trash it. Let's try that again. Keep Oklahoma beautiful. For more information, visit www.keepoklahomabeautiful.com.
welcome back to Studio 22 after we just watched an amazing performance from <laughs> well, the incredible Alicia Clifton. Thank you so much for well, doing for that for us do today. It. it was incredible. You could go to Miss America tomorrow but, again. Well, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. So you are a Thunder Girl now and you're a choreographer and you're kind of making your own name right now and just kind <laughs> of um, just being wonderful. So well, can thanks. you tell us um, first about your... Thunder Girl experience, kind of maybe the auditions, what inspired you to try out? Mm -hmm. Well, I, uh, my best friend Stephanie, she was already on the team, and I lived with her when I went back to school after being Miss Oklahoma. And she, I just saw her going to games, and she'd be so excited, and she'd go to appearances, and she'd have so many great stories from them. So I thought, well, I can dance too, and you know, maybe I'll give it a shot. So she <laughs> encouraged me, and she helped me get prepared. Um, the audition process is a week long process. Um, you learn different routines, you have to do boot camps um, with the official trainer that we have, and um, you have an interview process. So it's kind of like a mini Miss Oklahoma in a way. Um, <laughs> I love a mini Miss Oklahoma. <laughs> it basically That's very is. Well said. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and then we had the final auditions and I ended up making it, and it was just been, it's been such a joy. This is my second year being a Thunder Girl, and I've loved every second of it, because not only do we get to dance at the games, which are so much fun, but we get to do a lot of uh, community appearances. As Thunder Girls as a whole, we do over 200 appearances a year. Wow. So, I mean, we're pretty busy, um, but it's so much fun because all the girls are wonderful, wow. and it's a great organization. Mm -hmm. Can you name a few of those? appearances that you go to that are kind of community so we can look for you? Yeah, well, we I actually just the other day did the Breast Cancer Awareness Walk um, for Susan G. Komen. Oh, wow. What um, an opportunity to get yeah, to be involved. Yeah, no, there's so many wonderful just different organizations like that that we get to be a part of, um, whether it be birthday parties or more official events like that, um, just any opportunity that we can come in and, you know, make someone stay a little bit brighter. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Yeah, well, I went to my very first Thunder game because yes, I just you moved did. here and I got to watch you and you you were incredible Thanks. and looked just beautiful. You're like born to be on that oh, court. Thank you. So it was so fun to get to watch you um, be a Thunder Girl and see you in that role. <laughs> it's a different role. I really for sure. loved my experience. It was great. I'll be back like all the Good, time. You should come back, yeah. <laughs> Every week. Um, so you also choreograph for girls who are going to be competing in pageants or dance mm -hmm. competitions. Um, where do you teach at and kind of um, can you tell us a little bit about that choreography experience? Right. Um, I do lots of different choreography. Um, mainly I do tap dancing, um, but I also do jazz and lyrical, just kind of whatever a person needs. Um, I don't have an official studio right now. I kind of just do it at my parents' house for now um, because it's just easier that way. Um, but yeah, I love to help out. I love to give back. Um, that's kind of my way of giving back to the organization that helped me is to help other people, you know, try to achieve their dreams that they have for themselves. And mm -hmm. if it's through their talent, then I'm there to help them out. Yeah, absolutely. So if I hired you to choreograph a dance, do you pick out the music <laughs> or um, the costumes, right. what, the full experience? Well, I... It kind of depends on the individual. I'm there for whatever you need me for. If you need me there to do all of it, I'll do all of it and I'll help you out. But some people, you know, they already have an idea of what they want to do. And so I just kind of assist where I can. Mm -hmm. uh, well, sign me up. I'm <laughs> totally game for that. Anytime, anytime. <laughs> so uh, what else are you doing right now? You just got engaged. I so did. that's new in your life. It is new. Um, yes, but it's very exciting. Thank you very much. Um, I yep, will be getting married in February, and we're just real excited to kind of start that next chapter of our lives. Mm -hmm. Anything mm -hmm. else right now? This is kind of just, you know, trying to make it one day at a time right now. You know, the season's going to start back up. We have our first game this Friday, the okay. first official game. Um, so we're looking forward to that and just practicing and teaching and trying to plan a wedding in addition to all of it. So. Yeah, you, it's like your life is so boring. You never <laughs> yeah, have enough things to do. To do. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. So um, a lucky man, and do you have a date picked out yet? Yes, February 18th. February 18th, so, that is so exciting. Mm -hmm. Congratulations again. Thank you very and, much. I um, so I, I am lucky enough to get an invitation to the <laughs> wedding. <so laughs> yes, you are invited to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I will definitely be there, and I'm so excited. Um, I just want to say thank you so much. Oh, for being here with us today. Do you have any advice for any of those aspiring dancers or Guinness World Record holders out there? I just say it's one of those things that if it's something that you love to do and if it's something that you want to do, then you have to give it 100%. Um, if you halfway do it, you're not going to achieve the things that you want to achieve. So I'm a big believer in set super, super high 
high goals for yourself and work every single day in one way or another to achieve it because no one can else can make it happen but yourself. Mm -hmm. So those would be my biggest words of advice. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you again for having, Thank you. Uh, for being here today absolutely. and uh, having the time to be able to be interviewed and perform. You're amazing. Thank you. I'm glad model, I got to be so. here. This has been fun. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching 20, Studio 22. <laughs>